Over the past 25 years, there have been three major earthquakes in the Mojave Desert of California. These have occurred along the Eastern California Shear Zone, which accommodates nearly 30% of the motion between the North American and Pacific plates. The 1992 Landers earthquake was the first earthquake imaged by the emerging technique of repeat pass radar interferometry, pioneered by the European Space Agency and the ERS-1 spacecraft. Just seven years later, the Hector Mine earthquake was imaged by the second European satellite, ERS-2, which had improved orbital control that provided greatly improved images of the ground deformation. This improved orbit enabled a new technique called phase gradient mapping. This revealed triggered slip on nearby faults caused by the stress changes in the crust. Several of these faults were not mapped previously, and a few appeared to slip in the wrong direction. This phase gradient technology only works under very special circumstances related to the radar, the orbit control, and the lack of vegetation on the surface which causes decorrelation. Last year, two large earthquakes, which occurred just one day apart in Ridgecrest, California, were extremely well imaged by multiple passes and two look directions of the twin Sentinel-1 satellites. The improved technology combined with stacking from multiple passes enabled phase gradient mapping at much better resolution. This revealed a tiny amount of slip on hundreds of previously unmapped faults. Detailed analysis of the phase and phase gradient maps showed that most faults slipped in the direction of the prevailing tectonic stress as expected. However, there were many fractures that appeared to slip opposite to the prevailing tectonic stress, even though they did appear to slip in the direction associated with the stress change from the earthquake ruptures. Further analysis of these retrograde fractures showed that they did not actually slip in the wrong direction, but the low strength material in the pre-existing damage fault zone deformed in response to the local stress change from the earthquakes. The remaining puzzle is whether there is this high fault density everywhere along the San Andreas Fault System, or they only appear under certain conditions. In addition, we do not know exactly the ages of these faults and whether they slip deep into the crust or are just minor surface fractures. Quantitative measures for many current and future earthquakes are needed to resolve the puzzle.